Hey everyone, it's been such a long time since I've done a YouTube video, so I've decided to kind of kickstart my channel. It's been such, such a long time since I posted a video. When I posted my first, well, past it, posted my first YouTube video, um, I didn't know as much about DDLG and BDSM as I thought I did, so in the past few months I've learned a lot. And I've decided to kickstart my channel so I can share sort of my experiences with you guys. Um, to kind of kickstart my channel again, I'm gonna be doing a video on 12 ways to spot a fake dom. Now, this applies to daddy doms and mommy doms, um, also non binary. Um, it's very, very important to look out for these signs because having a fake dominant can ruin your entire experience of DDLG, it can ruin a person mentally, physically as well. So I'm posting this video just so that you guys remember to keep safe because you guys are so, so important. And I really think that it's so important to know when a person is a fake dominant. It can ruin your entire experience of DDLG, it can ruin a person mentally, physically as well so i'm posting this video just so that you guys remember to keep safe because you guys are so so important and i really think that it's so important to know when a person is a fake dominant okay so to kind of kick start my nerdy glasses again to kind of kick start my video i just wanted to bring up what a fake dom is so a fake dom is somebody who wants to be in a DDLG or CGL relationship purely for the fantasy, purely for the sex. Whoa, the glare and these glosses, it's intense. Okay. Um, they only want to be in the relationship for the sex, basically. Just so that you can call them daddy while they screw you, which is not at all what DDLG is about. Now, obviously, you get non-sexual DDLG relationships and sexual DDLG relationships but at the end of the day a CDL relationship shouldn't just be about a title and sex so a fake dom will be somebody who only wants those things so these are just 12 signs to spot a fake dom okay so the first thing that I put on my list is they ask you to send nudes straight away they ask you to send nudes as training, as sort of, um, they demand nudes straight away. And a real dominant will know that when you first get into a relationship, it's not about the nudes, the boobs, the sexy time, the play time, the princess parts. It's not about that. It's about getting to know your little. It's about getting to know their hobbies, what they like, what they don't like. Um, and then you get to that sort of stuff later on when you're both comfortable in the relationship. If they ask for that sort of thing straight away, um, my suggestion would be to block them because anybody who asks for nudes straight away actually you should block them because that's not cool that's not okay okay on with number two the second one is that whoa I clapped though the second one is that fake doms will they tend to exaggerate their experience they'll tell you that they've been in for so long they know exactly what they're doing they've had so many littles they they're the perfect dom for you which sometimes they are, but if they exaggerate it to a point where you're kind of doubting it, then they might not be the real dominant. Fake doms love to tell you that they're amazing at what they do, but a real dominant doesn't have to tell you. They can show you what they're, they're they'll show you their abilities and what they're good at. They don't have to constantly tell you what an amazing dominant they are. Um, I think just on that point, a lot of fake doms also tell you that they have all these contacts in BDSM. You know, they'll list all these top people that they know, and they'll say, yeah, I have their phone number, I have their email address, but then when you ask, you know, to have those contacts, because, you know, maybe you want to ask them a question, you want to speak to them, you know, speak to the references, but they can't give them to you, then you should be a little worried. Because... Chances are they're lying, and lying in any relationship, DDLG or vanilla, or not, or you know, any relationship really, um, lying should never be a part of it. It's very important to be honest with your partners. So, you know, if they're lying about their experience, about their contacts, their references, get out. They're not real. 
turned out the illusion. Um, on to number three, which ties in with asking for things straight away. They want to get straight to the sex. They want to get straight to pounding it, straight to get in there, and I, like I said before, DDLG relationship. When you first get into it, it really it shouldn't be about the sex. It shouldn't be about the sexy stuff, any of that sort of thing. It should be about getting to know your partner. I mean, as a little as well, you know, what are the things that your dominant likes? Is there any dominant you care about? What are the things that your little like? So it's very very important to know the difference between someone who wants sex straight away, they're asking for it all, all the time. They're saying, come on, just have sex with me as part of your training, that sort of thing. A real dominant will not ask for sex straight away. They will wait to get to know you, they will ask you when you're comfortable, and they will not demand sex. That's very, very important. A real dominant does not demand sex when you're fresh into the relationship. So that's very, very, very important. Do not have sex with somebody who demands it straight away before getting to know the person. And for any, actually, do not have sex with anybody who demands that you have sex with them or asks for sex straight away, straight into the relationship. I'm babbling so much. Let's move on to the next point. So just kind of tying in with um, demanding sex straight away, I think dominant will also only pay attention to you. This is reason number four. Four? Lost, I don't know. Reason number four is that they will only pay attention to you when you're in your sexy mood, or they'll only pay attention to you when you're in little space. Um, real dominance don't do that. I don't have. I don't know. The point is pretty self-explanatory. A fake dominant will only pay attention to you um, during sex. They won't really be interested in you otherwise. They won't be interested in learning about your life, your hobbies, your friends. What are the quirks you have? What are the things you like to do? They won't be interested in any of that. They'll just be interested in the sex and they only pay attention to you during sex. So it's very, very important. A person in a DDLG relationship who's only orientated about sex, and that ties into my next point, because there, there are a lot of things, because obviously a fake dom is all about that sex stuff and they're not really about a real DDLG relationship. Um, it's a huge, huge indicator, and it's definitely something you need to look out for very, very intensely if you're a little and you're searching for a dominant. Okay, um, I keep looking over there because my notes are there. I made like a little note, a list of all the things, so I just I keep looking over. So, um, like I said, the next few points are going to be quite, quite short. So this is point number five, and it's that a fake dominant will only be interested in talking about one topic, which will be the sexy stuff. Um, they'll only be interested in the little stuff, in the DDLG stuff. And know that when you're having a conversation with someone, if that's the only thing you talk about with a dominant, the only thing you talk about, then they're not interested in you as a person. And it's very important to find a dominant who's interested in you, not your princess parts, or your prince parts, or your parts. Okay, it's very interested to find a dominant who loves you for you because at the end of the day it's still a relationship and it's about love. That's really what it's about. So another big indicator is when the dominant demands submission. Um, they'll demand that you submit yourselves to them and submission is earned. Just like with anything in life, like respect, submission is earned. A dominant, a real, genuine dominant, will not demand that you submit to them. It's something that they earn. So if you're a little and you meet a dominant and you're very interested in them, and the first thing that they demand is that you submit to them, they call you their mommy or their daddy before you have an actual relationship, they refer to themselves as your caregiver when you haven't agreed to that, it's a huge red light, it's a huge indicator that they're not genuine. Okay, so my next point is going to be that a fake dominant, I've been saying that word so much in this video, well, I mean, that's what it's about, so, but a lot, I don't know, okay, so a fake dominant will only, they'll only punish you and they won't give you praise, and they'll be very quick to punish you, 
those are two points. Yeah, um, they'll be very quick to punish you. They won't think about what you've done seriously. Even for the smallest things, they'll punish you in a very harsh and sexual way. And they won't praise you. There's no aftercare. There's no loving. It's purely about spanking you, getting their arousal, and kind of moving on. So it's very important to know your worth. Know that you're not just there for somebody else's pleasure. You should also receive the loving, the caring, the attention that you deserve as a little. So it's very important that you get to the right kind of relationship, the right CGL relationship. Um, my next one is that they don't give structure. They won't give you a bedtime, the time you have to call them, nap time, brush your teeth, they don't give you a set set of rules because they don't really care about that. They only really care about the sexy stuff. So it's very, very, very important that if your dominant doesn't give you structure, they don't tell you, you know, I want X, Y, and Z. Obviously discussing it in a proper manner, you know, while both of you are in the right space of mind, discussing your rules and that sort of thing. It's so, so important in any BDSM relationship, in any of the branches, the different categories, to discuss the things that you're okay with, the things that you're comfortable with. And if your dominant doesn't do that, they don't discuss your rules, your allowances, you can have this amount of candy a day, um, this amount of TV, that sort of thing. Then they don't care about you as a person, they only care about what they can get from you. Um, for a little structure is very very important otherwise you can get out of hand even if you know you give yourself structure because you don't have a dominant it's important so that you don't take things too far because as littles we tend to do that a lot we can be very bratty especially if we're tired we can eat too much candy we feel sick so it's very important to have a certain set of rules and if your dominant doesn't do that then it could be because they're fake they're not real <laughs> Okay. The next one is that if your dominant is very, very mean when they don't get their way, they shout at you, they call you names, they're very aggressive when they don't get their way, it's a huge red light. As with any relationship, if somebody goes straight into anger mode, they're very harsh and rude to you when they don't get their way, the chances are they're not a very understanding person. And that's not the kind of relationship that anybody wants to be in. We want to be in a relationship based on mutual respect. So as much as when they say no, they expect you to listen to them. When you say no, you expect them to listen to you as well. So it's very, very important to know that your dominant should respect you when you put your foot down and when you say no. They shouldn't go off on a rant. They shouldn't lecture you or punish you for saying no as well especially if it's something very important i mean if it if you're if they tell you to you know go brush your teeth and you say no obviously they're going to punish you but if it's for something for example you don't feel comfortable doing something sexual and you say no and they get very angry and rude and mean then that's not the kind of relationship that you want to be in and you should get out now <laughs> it's it can lead to very very dangerous things it can even be abusive so it's very, very important to know your worth and know that you're worth some more than the way that that person would treat you. You get me? You get me? You get me? Okay, this is my last final point and it is so, so important for people who are meeting doms online, for meeting anyone online. A fake dom will, they won't want to meet you in a public place. They will meet, want to meet you at their house. They'll say, no, it's fine, you know, just come over. Just come to my house, we can have fun like that. Don't go to somebody's house that you don't know. And that's just common sense for anybody. But a lot of people fall into that trap and it can lead to horrific things. Worst case, being kidnapped, sex trafficking, that kind of thing. So it's very, very important to not go to a dominant's house straight away. If you're going to meet someone online, you should, first of all, you should be with somebody that you know, and it should be in a public area so that nothing bad can happen. There should be lots of people around, and you should be very, very cautious. Um, just because so many bad things do happen. I mean, obviously, they could be an amazing person, but you need to be so, so careful because it's very, very important that 
you don't take the chance. Because if you take the chance, it might go the wrong way. Something terrible, terrible can happen. So if a dominant tells you that, you, you know, instead of meeting in a public place, they just want you to come to their house, don't do it. Do not go to somebody's house that you don't know. And I cannot, cannot stress this enough. You are so, so important. Don't do it. You're important to so many people. So many people out there love you and care for you. Um, it would be so, so awful if you thought that you were going to meet this amazing dominant that you met online and it turns out to be a completely different situation. So I think that's just a huge, a huge thing that I cannot stress enough. Do not go to somebody's house that you do not know in any situation. Even if they're a little friend and they say that they just want you to come go to their house, don't do it unless you actually know the person. So to kind of end off my video, I just want to say thank you to all the people who watched this. Um, I know it's been so long since I posted my last video, but I'm going to be posting a lot more. It's the holidays, I have so much more time. Um, I'm in my second last year of high school, so there's a lot, a lot <laughs> of schoolwork and that sort of thing. So I just wanted to let you know that you're all so cool and so special and thank you for watching the videos. I so okay, so just to end off my video, I'm gonna leave my Instagram down below. I made a Tumblr, but I'm not very active on Tumblr, so I'm gonna leave my Instagram down below there. Or I don't know how to do that actually, I don't know if any will be down below. So, thank you. And